Is it easy to install? Yes. Download the plugin, install it in your plugins, add new, install that, and you will see this bit form menu appear right here. All right, once you have that form, that uh, plugin installed, you will be able to create a form. Now, I'll just give you an example right here of one of the forms that I've created, but we're gonna create one from scratch right now. So all you have to do is just embed the code. Um, in this case, I'm using Divi Builder, but you can use um, anything you want, Oxygen Builder, Elementor, Gutenberg, just whatever. With the embed code, this one right here, it will appear, and you will see that in this video. So let's create a brand new form. Let's go with a blank form. Now, one of the downsides about this is that they don't have templates. I wish they had some templates to get started really quickly because it saves you time, all right? So let's go ahead and drag this inside of here. And let's drag another one. Let's drag a checkbox. Nah, let's dra drag and drop. That's really useful. All right, um, we're gonna ask for the email, obviously. We will ask for the website, for example. Now we can add the date if we want. Let's add the date right there. Uh, it could be another thing, like for example, the month. If you want to set that there, color picker, we, we can add a recapture. We can add decision box. We got PayPal and Razor Pay as payment gateway. So you can sell through this. All right. So one of the cool features about Bitform is the drag and drop. This is something I wish other form builders would adopt because it's just way more easier. And I'll show what I'm. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So check out my mouse. I'm gonna drag it to this corner and see how that little corner drops there. I can drag this to the size that I need. This would be the smallest, but this is the size that I would choose and I could just drag and drop that. Um, in other type of form builders, you would have to go select a template that says, you know what, um, a one by two, one by three, one by four, and kind of just work with what they have and not drag and drop like this. Now I can drag this one to the same size and I'll just drag it up here. And now we got two of them and let's go ahead and drag the date. All right, because we don't want a large date, small as we can. Drag it up here, and we got another one we can put there. So let's drag the month. So we can make a really compact form like this. Just see how easy that was? Um, now, if you want to edit the fields, so text field would say, in this case would be the name, and this one would be, that one would be, oops, last name, and they would it, it could be whatever you want. It could be like, for example, birthday, so that's something you want to add there. And you have the settings for each time that you select a field, you get the settings for those. So for example, the name, do we want to make it required? Well, for obvious reasons, yes. Do we want autofill enabled? In this case, we don't want it enabled. Um, the email field, it's obviously going to be required. The drop down menu, let's edit the options. So in this case, let's say it's going to be support. Okay, support. It's going to be sales warranty and let's add a number field right here so they will only be able to add numbers so let's drag this to halfway okay this one also halfway and let's make it more compact like that and we'll just say for example right here receipt right that's what we're gonna ask for a receipt just in case they ask for a warranty and I'll show you with conditional logic so for example the placeholder is what's inside of here you can see placeholder text um, we can add something like, um, you know what, put your name here. Or if it were something like a box where you would put, um, add the information right here, um, please add your receipt number, such and such numbers, add them here. And that's the way you would do that, all right? So we can add more fields if we want, but in this case, let's go jump over to the styling before we jump into conditional logic. So the styling is this one right here. These are the styles that we have available right now. For example, background. We can add an image for the background. We can change the view of this if you want to see how it actually is going to look for the user if they're on mobile, tablet, or the laptop or desktop. If we want to add a background, for example, in this, we can add a fill right there, which doesn't look really good. We can remove that. We can upload a picture. So for example, let me see if I have something available right here. All right, let's add this handsome guy right here. Right, and he's in the background. Now I know this is not useful, but I mean, you would add something that actually works in the background. And you could add opacity, you can add, for example, an overlay. So for example, if we add a color, that would add an overlay. Um, darken, it gives you other type of applications. That kind of didn't, it's a subtle change, not a lot. Lighten, well, that just took over the whole thing. But maybe if I use the gradient right there, all right, that'll work. Let's get a little bit more so we can have a clear way. Oh, the letters are almost white, so just like that. Just an example, all right? 
Um, we have border options right here. So for example, let me work with the borders and we can change that. Okay, so it could be a line, dotted, dashed, double, or none. In this case, we'll keep it to none. And then we have padding if we need to like pad it from the size right there. Oh, that didn't drag. There we go. It's padding from the whole thing, but the, because I have selected the whole square. But if I want to select just the top, we'll pad the top. We'll pad it a bit on the sides and from the bottom and that side. All right. Margins, if we want to work with the margins, let me show you that. Again, it's going to move the whole form right there. We don't want any margins in this. We can add a sh uh, shadow right here if we wanted to. It's a subtle shadow right there. Let me show you. We can expand it. You can grab that there. In this case, my builder has the shadow, so I won't be adding any shadow to it. And that's for the style. Now, let's go embed this before we go into the settings and other kind of things, all right? So let's save it because I wanna show you how easy this actually is. Let's just say you built your form, you're ready to go, and you wanna embed it, all right? So this is the new form that I've created. Now it's ID2, let me copy this code. Let's go into the builder. Now, if you're using Gutenberg, again, you just add in the classic form this this um, widget, this uh, shortcut, I mean, and it'll show. In this case, I'm using Divi, like I said, and I will be adding the shortcut right here. So remove that one, add this one, save that. Let's exit the builder. Let's save and exit, and we should be able to see it. Let's wait for that to load. All right, there we go. That's the form I just built. Um, I added the shadow right there. I would have to go in the builder and fix it so it doesn't look like that. But just to show you that it's easy to just grab the short code and embed it. So it's create and embed. Now, if someone fills this information right now, it's gonna be stored inside of your WordPress inside over here, right? So if I go right here and fill it out, you have the information, the form responses, because we haven't set up any other uh, type of connection, right? So if I've set it up webhooks or Google Sheets, something like that, it will go over there also. So two places, those are three places. All with webhooks, basically you can send it anywhere you want, all right? So let's go back into the builder. So let's edit this. And let's go into conditional logic. All right, so right here, let's go first to conditional logic, which be, would be right here. And let's add a conditional logic. Let's edit this action. And what we're gonna do is a basic conditional logic to kind of show you what you can do with it, all right? So action run, record when created or edit, action effect on load form. In this case, we're gonna put on field input, and it's gonna be a conditional logic. And we're gonna remove this one, we're gonna keep it simple. And we're gonna say when the drop down menu is contains, all right, and we're gonna say if it contains support or if it contains cells, then we're gonna do something with it. So check what I'm gonna do, all right? What's the action that's gonna do, all right? So if this happens, then do this. So the action is gonna be in the receipt, we are going to say hide that field, all right? So if support or cells is selected, we do not need the receipt, so that will be hidden, all right? Just kind of give you an idea of conditional logic. You can do many, many things with it, all right? So let's go update the form right here. Let's refresh it. All right, and if support is selected, so for example, sales or support, see the receipt is not here, it's gonna be gone. But if I select warranty, it's gonna be available, all right? So we don't want the receipt information if it's gonna be about support. Just give you an example, right? Or if it's gonna be about sales, then you don't give that. You can show and hide other fields. You can pre-field something if you want. You can do a lot of things with it with conditional logic. And there's a, you can add more conditions to it. You can add more actions to this. For example, the action could be another thing also. So if this happens, do this and also do this. Or if two conditions, or if, yeah, two conditions are met, well, you can do it and, or, all right? So if one or the other is met, then do the other action. Or if, and this is met, so both of those things, criteria are met, then do the action. So it's pretty cool that we have all this available. I'm gonna remove it for now because we don't wanna keep that, just for testing purposes. We have the form settings. So allow single entries for each IP. This is really useful if you don't want a lot of spams. For example, someone can spam with the same IP, but it can be a drawback because, for example, if they mess up and they need to refill it, then it won't let them because it's based on the IP, all right? But if it's something like a fill out for a concert or something like that, then you want one single at one IP. Um, capture GLCLID. G, yeah, C-L-I-D, 
don't know what that is, but you can check that out. Disable this form after limited entries. Um, this is useful, for example, if you are giving a, I don't know, an event and it's only gonna be 100 people who are gonna attend, will you limit that to 100 people only? Limit form submission period is also useful. So for example, you can limit by these days, by time or by day. We will disable that. Blocked IP list. So if you have a list of IPs that you are you know that are spamming or something like that, then you block them. Or allow IPs if you know their IP and they're having trouble with that. So you ask for their IP and they can do that. The confirmations. So you have the success message right here. You can and you can edit this obviously. You can send it to a redirect page. This could be useful if you want to send them once they fill out, for example, the event uh, form. Well, you take them to another page where it has to do with the event information or get prepared for this kind of stuff, right? Or you can use webhooks for the confirmation. Really useful uh, webhooks. You can use Zapier, Public Connect, Integromat, and many other softwares out there, um, SaaS apps that can do webhooks. So you put the webhooks. And in this case, if we wanted to send out the information, we would go with post, test out the webhook, at each value. So for example, the value of this one could be the name, and you would select the value from over here. Oops, got to select there. For example, that value corresponds to this name, all right? So it's kind of weird, so you have to use it that way. Um, the other one would be, for example, last name. This would be if you want to set up webhooks, just in case. And that would be the last hook. And you would eat at each parameter once that's done. Go to your app, that your favorite app you're going to use, Zapier, Pally Connect, Integromat, all that, Integrately, and search for Webhook. Once that's done, test that Webhook. It's going to send out the information. And with that Webhook, you can do a whole lot with it, right? Send it out to CRMs, email marketing services, and uh, so on and so forth, all right? Next thing we have is the templates right here. If you want to add an email template, you can create the, the information right there. And the integrations that are available are these as of now. Um, pretty popular ones. For example, we saw Webhook. That's an integration. Popular one would be Google Sheets. This one is one of my favorites because I can have my information with the capture that Bitform is going to do in the site. Plus, I can also send it out to my Google Sheets to have a backup or do something else with that Google Sheet. So that's really popular one. And you have all these other ones available, right? Just in case you want to use those. So basically, that is a bit form. It's a good uh, form builder. You have these available right now. I wish the style and customization was a bit more robust and complex. So it's I have more options to do with it. For example, I couldn't find, I could be wrong, but I didn't see any CSS customization. But if we ask for it, I guess they will start adding it. But one of my favorite parts about this is the drag and drop builder right here. That's something I don't see in other form builders, and I think they should adopt this. Well, there you go, guys. This is the video for uh, Bitform. The price is really attractive, so don't forget to grab one of these deals. Thank you for watching. My name's George. This is SaaS Master, and I'll see you guys later.